Okay, 14-4 is the chain rule, and the problems on this section are almost always a joke. Um, this shit is is very, very straightforward once you understand how to do it. So let's take a look then at a previous exam problem, actually. This is from fall 2017 um, from a midterm, uh, and... E you'll be surprised that this was a midterm problem and I was surprised that this was a midterm problem but it asked the following um, let f of x y z uh, equal x squared plus 2 y z okay that's it and where does the chain rule come into play the chain rule comes into play when you have this function of x y z right um, however there's a the, 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 there's a plot twist and x itself is a function and x is equal to t squared plus s. So x itself is a function of two other variables. y itself is a function of the same two variables, um, but it's 2t minus s. And z is also a function of t and s. All right, so you got f of x, y, z is equal to these guys. Here's x, here's y, here's z. Now, the question is, what happens when I want to find the partial derivative with respect to s. All right. So, what is the partial derivative with respect to s? Well, f by itself, right? There's no s in it. But each one of these x, y's and z's has an s in it. So, what we want to do then is we want to set up this following diagram where okay, here's f, right? And f has three variables, right? It has x, y, z, right? And since we're trying to find the partial of f with respect to s, that x, y, and z are all a function of s, right? And t as well. And, but if we wanted to do for t, we would make a separate uh, one of these diagrams for t, right? And what do we do? Well, over here, we write df dx, right? Because we are going from df to dx along that line. And then here we're going from dx, uh, from x to s. So we want to write this as dx ds. Man, I'm being like dyslexic right now or something. Um, dysgraphic? I don't know what it's called. And now, okay, now we're going from f to y. So we want to write this as df dy. And then from y, we want to go to s. So this is now d y ds all right and then we go from df to z right so we want df dz we go from f to z and then you go from z to s so we want dz ds and what do we all want well eventually what you want to do then is to get from df to ds you have to traverse along all three of these paths right makes sense right i have to go down this first left path and then i go down the middle path and then i go down to the end path and those are all the ways I can get to S. And so we write df ds is equal to df dx dx ds. All right. So that's essentially going along this left-hand side path, right? And then we add df dy dy ds. All right. And that's just going down then the middle path right here, right? We're going down that middle path. And then we add the right-hand side path, df, dz, dz, ds. Okay. And that's then going down the right-hand side path. So, and that's all we have to do. That's how we find the partial derivative of f with respect to s, right, is we calculate each one of these partial derivatives and we got to multiply them. So what is df, dx? Well, df, dx, here's f, right? df dx looks like it's 2x dx ds here's x dx with respect to x is 1 okay plus df dy so here's f with respect to y well, we'll take the derivative of y there you get 2z dy ds well that looks like a negative 1 and then plus df dz We'll I'll take the derivative of that with respect to z, you're left with the 2y, right? Again, the derivative of x with respect to z is obviously 0, so I'm not going to even consider it. And then dz ds is negative 1 as well. 
Okay, and then now what do I have? This is equal to 2x minus 2z minus 2y is df ds. All right, and what do I have? Well, the, the problem also tells me um, I want to evaluate it at t equals 1, s equals 1. Okay, so, so this is equal to 2. Well, what is x? x is t squared plus s, right? Minus 2 times 3t squared minus s, which is z, and then minus 2 times y, which is 2t minus s, right? And so at t equals 1 and s equals 1, this is 2 times 2 minus 2 times 2 minus 2 times 1. And so this is 4 minus 4 minus 2. And so I get negative 2 is going to be df ds evaluated at t equals 1, s equals 1. So this is df ds at any point. Okay. And this is df ds um, at t equals 1 s equals 1. So that's how we do the chain rule. I don't know why this is a midterm problem. It's actually super easy. This sure would have been a free 10 points if you had it on your midterm. Um, but that's one of the chain rule problems that we'll see. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to go back to implicit differentiation. And why is that? Well, it's because there's a shortcut I want to talk about um, when we're dealing with implicit differentiation. And I don't remember where my previous example is. It's right here. Okay. So remember this example, right? We wanted to find dz dx, right, where x cubed z squared minus 5xy to the fifth z uh, is equal to x squared plus y cubed. All right. The cool thing is for, for, uh, how do I say this, for, certain equations right if you're able to write this all on one side and let it equal to zero so if you have x cubed z squared minus 5xy to the fifth z minus x squared um, minus y cubed is equal to zero so we call this as pretend this was like a function f of x y z right and if you're able to write your implicit your, your equation as f of x y z is equal to zero or in a two-dimensional case, um, f of x, y, or f of x, y is equal to zero, right? Then we can use a special shortcut to find dz dx, and it's the following. dz dx is equal to negative f sub z over f sub x, or negative f sub x over f sub z, right? And so now you're probably wondering, what the hell is f sub x? Well, this is just another notational way. f sub x is equal to df dx, okay? And f sub z is equal to df dz, okay? So let's prove that this works. So what do we have? Well, what is f sub x, right, which is df dx? So I want you guys to get used to this notation because we're, I'm going to be using it heavy in uh, 14.5, I think. I think that's, yeah, 14.5, I'm going to be using this notation really heavily. So, okay, so that's equal to, um, so you got to look at this equation right here uh, since that's the F equation. And so we get 3x squared z squared minus 5y to the fifth z. Um, minus 2x, right, is, okay, so that's df dx, and now what's f sub z, right, which is df dz, so I look at this guy, take the partial with respect to z, and I get 2x cubed z minus 5xy to the fifth, all right, and then so then dz dx is equal to negative f sub x over z. So that's uh, 2x plus 5y to the fifth z minus 3x squared z squared. So I just multiply the top thing in by negative 1 and then change the order of like 2 uh, and, and that guy. Divided by 2x cubed z minus 5xy to the fifth. And this should look familiar, right? And it is familiar because this is exactly what we got 
in the previous video. from 14.3 and this was a lot shorter to do okay a lot lot shorter to do so again when can we use this we can only use this when we're able to write our equation as f of x y z is equal to zero or f of x y is equal to zero and the proof of this is from the chain rule which is why i didn't show you guys this in 14.3 but when you run to differential uh, when you want to implicit differentiation this is the simplest way to go so dz dx is equal to negative f of x f of z um, likewise, if you have like dz dy, that's equal to negative f of y, um, f of z, and then like dy dx is equal to negative f of x, um, f of y, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So these are all um, the same thing, and they all then would stem from uh, this case right here, all right? Or, or this case if you only have two variables. So this is the two variables case. So that's implicit differentiation that's the chain rule uh hopefully you guys uh understand the chain rule well it's just not that hard and we'll be moving on to 14.5 which i don't even remember what 14.5 is let me take a look real quick 14.5 is going to be directional derivatives and gradients okay maybe i was wrong there's another there's another equation no screw it uh, I'm not going to talk about it. There's there's a really difficult problem in 14.4, um, and I highly take you recommend you guys take a look at it. Um, it's 14.4.45. This this problem is almost impossible um, for people to do on their first try, but uh, I think it's worthwhile. And uh, I'm not going to do it in a video, but we're going to move on to 14.5 uh, then. Um, and yeah.